Coming up in the morning edition, an historic day as a number of Bahamians will be presented with national honors. The future of young people highlighted as hundreds took to the streets. And the search continues for suspects who torched government vehicles. It's National Heroes Day. Good morning, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis, and this is the Morning Edition. Thank you so much for waking up with us. On this holiday Monday, our tower cam is showing partly cloudy conditions on the outside. However, your traffic commute could be quite smooth if you're out and about. However, as usual, there are concerns for some drivers. Siesca Adderley is on our streets. Good morning, Siesca. Good Monday morning. I want to wish you all a happy National Heroes Day. This morning we're coming to you live from the downtown area where it is relatively quiet and that's to be expected as it is a national holiday. So I'm sure many of you are sleeping in and getting that much needed rest for the start of the official work week tomorrow. So as I said, traffic is relatively quiet and I said that's expected. But traffic officers also want you to be cautious if you're planning to participate take in alcoholic beverages at some point today to please have a designated driver and traffic officers also want you pedestrians who may choose to hang out at a local bar nearby to also watch your intake of alcohol as impaired driving and walking could lead to even more problems. Now we understand from traffic officials that the weekend has been relatively quiet and they're hoping to keep it that way and they want you all to enjoy your national heroes holiday well we're going to stay downtown and i have a special guest with me to talk more about the significance of this holiday but for now traffic wise it's relatively quiet on this national heroes day holiday back to you in the studio ladon joining us live in studio on this holiday monday is chief meteorologist basil dean with our weather outlook good morning basil uh, good morning, LaDon. We have some uh, outer bands from uh, Tropical Storm uh, Michael, which is uh, near the Yucatan Peninsula, and that fired up some early morning showers. We'll get a little bit more later on during the course of the day. All the details coming up late in the newscast, so do stay tuned. And outside of our studios, partly cloudy with recent rain showers, temperatures 79 degrees, your relative humidity 78%. Easterly winds at 12 miles per hour, your barometric pressure 1,014.0 millibars is 29.94 inches, and it is steady. Temperatures around the islands uh, this morning, uh, we have 78 degrees in Grain Toll Key, that's in Abaco. Freeport also 78 degrees, Marsh Harbor, Abaco 78. In the Berry Islands, 81, 82 degrees in Allistown, Bimini. Harbor Island, 81, 81 in Rock San Elutra, Otterstown, Cat Island, Staniel Key in Exumas, Camp Space on Andros, also Fresh Creek Central Andros, all reporting 81 degrees at this hour. More 81s in San Salvador and Rum Key as we go into Crooked Island, 80 degrees, Clarence Town, Long Island, 80. Also Ragged Island, Ackland, 79, Betsy Bay, Maguana, 79, Matutani, Nagua, 78 degrees, and the Turks and Caicos Islands at 80 degrees. Your boating forecast for today in the Northwest Bahamas, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, wave fights 4 to 6 feet, so caution flags are in place for your boaters in the Northwest Bahamas. Low tide at 12.59 this afternoon, we have a high tide at 7.03 this evening. And for the Southeast Bahamas, winds southeast 10 to 15 knots, wave fights 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. That's going to do it for your first look at weather the morning edition. Stay tuned, your forecast for today and tonight is still ahead. Thanks a lot, Basil. It's quite an historic day for the Bahamas. The first National Honors Awards will be presented to 36 Bahamians this morning at Government House. For years, the National Heroes Committee, led by Canon Sebastian Campbell, has been lobbying for such awards, and now that desire is a reality. He is standing by with Siesca Adderley in Rawson Square, where the dream started. Good morning again, Siesca. Good Monday morning. As I said to you earlier in the newscast, it's National Heroes Day and it's a significant day. And stand, I'm standing next to a significant man that's Canon Sebastian Campbell, chairman of the National Heroes Committee. And he's going to talk about the significance of this day and just how long he's been fighting to have this day recognized and all the special activities that are happening today. Good morning, Canon Campbell. How are you? Good morning. Very well. And thanks for having me. And first and foremost, to wish all Bahamians and residents of the Bahamas out there a happy National Heroes Day. 
Currently, we are standing in Rawson Square at the bus of Samilo, the first Bahamian Governor General. And this spot is significant. This is hallowed ground. This is where we started the fight, campaign, struggle, whichever word you want to use, towards the recognition of a day for Bahamians to be known as National Heroes Day. That has been back since 1989. And... Um, We've been fighting a long time. Thank God we didn't give up. And at first we started asking for a holiday to recognize the deeds of Samilo. And then um, the government complained that there were enough holidays in the year. And we have a whole um, um, slew of behemoths who ought to be recognized. And so our campaign had the change to have a day for all behemoths. Um, heroes. And this came to the fore in 2000 when at the death of Sir Lyndon Pinlin, the father of the nation, when it was then um, suggested by Prime Minister Hubert Ingram that um, a day ought to be set aside by re quote unquote christening one of the present holidays that we had in place. And um, the day of the second Monday in October became the, um, the best or the most appropriate of those days because we also had a campaign uh, in our history about um, recognizing true behemoths and therefore Columbus became, a question mark was put to um, the celebration of Columbus Discovery Day. And so um, we got two at one shot in, in the sense that we got the National Heroes Day and the Discovery Day then has become a day of national recognition rather than a holiday itself. So let me be quick to add that um, Discovery Day is still there on the calendar to be recognized as a day of recognition because it's a teaching moment in our history. Um, but overshadowing that definitely would be this, the holiday, the celebration of all our heroes, Milo Butler, Lyndon Pinlin, and all the grassroots, whom we tend to forget many times, or teachers, or um, performing artists, or ministers, or fishermen, or sportsmen, and the list goes on. And so um, we actually um, got a little bit more than that. We also got um, the majority rule um, holiday, and that was an additional holiday added. And I think as a nation, growing nation, we couldn't but help to have a holiday um, to mark the new Emancipation Day of, of the Bahamas. And so on this day, we encourage Bahamians all over to come and you name your heroes. Um, the government should not have to name a hero for you. Um, and in our family island communities, in our communities here in New Providence, we ask that um, you single out those persons who you can regard as your heroes, your legends, your nation builders, your role models, and find appropriate ways to celebrate them. I only know currently of a service this morning at 11 o'clock at St. Paul's in, in Fox Hill, where they'll be celebrating the heroes of Fox Hill. And Canon Campbell, I understand you are one of those heroes that they'll be recognizing at 11 o'clock, right? Well, yeah, the, um, there is a ceremony at Government House at 11 o'clock this morning, when um, some 38 persons would be recognized in the new system. Let me sit up with all the excitement <laughs> at my disposal. The new system of national honors, which was also one of the prime objectives of the National Heroes Committee. Right. There is no way you can have National Heroes Day without having a national system of honors. All right. Well, thank you so much, Canon Campbell. It's been a pleasure. You're always a wealth of knowledge. And I know you're very passionate about this holiday, so I'm glad that all of the hard work that you and your committee have done has finally come to fruition that we all can enjoy and generations to enjoy. But we're going to turn it back over to the studio with LaDawn Davis, who has another special guest in studio to talk more about this day and the festivities.
Yes, we do, Siesca. Thank you so much. As required by the National Honors Act 2016, Her Excellency, the Governor General, the Most Honorable Dame Marguerite Pinling, will conduct the annual investiture of National Honors. The names of honorees was announced by the Governor General on July 10th, as advised by the Prime Minister on the recommendations of the National Honors Advisory Committee. They include past Governors General, Prime Ministers, and other Bahamians from a wide cross-section of society. Chairman of the Committee, Mark Hume, joins us live in studio. Mr. Humes, thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Edition. Good morning. Good morning. It's such a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Now, Mr. Humes, are you able to share with us your thoughts today as the country prepares to recognize this group of Bahamians? Well, you know, like uh, in the segment prior, um, Reverend Campbell said it's a mom uh, momentous day, um, you know, where as a nation we celebrate our own. Um, you know, first time in our history, where we as a nation, um, you know, pay recognition to those who have made seminal contributions to our, our nation's development. So um, this is a tremendous um, occasion. Uh, it's a time for celebration, and we look forward to this day and, uh, you know, the confirming of awards on our, on our nominees. And tell us more about the works of the committee in terms of making this selection. Well, you, you know, we are an advisory, advisory committee, and our job, our role is to um, receive nominations from the general public, to vet those nominations, and to make a recommendation to the prime minister. Um, this year, I think we had somewhat in the area of about 200, 250 persons who had um, nominated for the award, and we would, we would have had to have gone through those nominations meticulously, uh, vetted them, and then, you know, again, once we had done that, make our recommendations to the uh, Prime Minister. And was it challenging to get to this point, and what was the actual feedback by the public? It, it really, it was challenging because you have so many across this nation, you have so many qualified Bahamians, persons who are qualified to receive these honors. And because this is about selecting the best of the best, um, it was a very difficult decision to decide, to decide for this um, ceremony who would have been the best of the best for 2018. Um, in general, the overall reception from the public, we, we, we received um, tremendous support from the public on our selection. I think the public is aware that you know, there was some some discussion on, on those persons who received the National uh, Heroes Award, but overall it was, uh, we, we received tremendous support from the general public. And speaking of that, what's the committee's role uh, moving forward? Moving forward, we begin this process again. Uh, we're, we're scheduled to meet shortly after the conferment of awards today, uh, and we will begin the process of inviting the public to submit names for persons who, would, who they feel would uh, be best suited to receive our awards for next year, 2019. Thank you so much, Mr. Humes, for joining us here on the Morning Edition. Thank you, LaDawn, for having me. Once again, the National Honors Awards Ceremony begins at 11 o'clock this morning at Government House. The event will be carried live on the ZNS television and radio network. In other news, hundreds of young Bahamians from a large number of youth organizations took to the streets yesterday for the much-anticipated Youth March. It's just one of many activities planned to celebrate National Youth Month. Leading the march was Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, the Honorable Anisha Roll. She said this year's march and the camaraderie demonstrated why our young people are so important to the future growth and development of this country. To show people that they have that resolve um, and that ability to do what needs to be done to take this country forward. And so we are pushing them in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture at the forefront of the change that we need. Director of Youth, Sports and Culture Darren Turnquest also indicated that young people are the driving force behind change in this country. So today is a testament of the fine work of so many of our youth leaders and youth practitioners who are really doing amazingly well in their efforts. And so we're so happy to have all the spectators out here and of course the participators, the young people who are at the forefront of change and really not change for the future but presently making change in our great country.
Police are this morning searching for suspects connected to a vehicle fire here in the capital. Four government cars went up in flames during a late night fire at the Department of Labor on Carmichael Road Saturday night. Officials suspect the blaze was a result of arson. No one is in custody at this time. However, Fire Services is continuing its investigation into this matter. Also, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is advising that Bahamians residing in Haiti and Cuba are all safe following that earthquake which occurred in the northern region of Haiti, extending to the eastern coast of Cuba on Saturday. The ministry noted that the Bahamas has also extended sincere sympathy to the Republic of Haiti for following the devastation, the devastating impact of this tragic event. The ministry says it will inform the general public of new developments relating to this issue as deemed necessary. And coming up here, how a teenager is pushing to assist those battling cancer here in the Bahamas. That story and more when the morning edition comes right back. Also this morning, a 15-year-old Comet from Queens College is doing her part to make a difference in the lives of Bahamians battling cancer. And this month, she is making hundreds of pink ribbons in support of the fight for breast cancer and to raise awareness of the disease that she says has impacted the lives of so many Bahamian women and their families. Here's her story. Because I like to give back to my community. She's been designing unique ribbons for all forms of cancer for the past five years. These include specials for civic and social organizations. And this month, Queens College student Taya Munnings says the request for pink ribbons is in high demand as we highlight Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I'm going to have a lot of sales. So I decided to make pink ribbons, and I did like three different shades of pink just for breast cancer because I didn't just want to do one color pink. I figure all three shades would be nice. Well, I like to do craft. So I figure if I came up with an idea to raise money, I can give back and it can help, you know, the charities to help people with cancer. The eloquent yet poised 10th grader says making ribbons for life is a hobby for her. And while it appears to be an easy task, she says making more than 5,000 ribbons over the last five years for a worthy cause has been nothing but rewarding. I have new products come in that we're going to be selling like wristbands and pins and decals. Cows. And then you have pins like the metal pins for males to wear if they don't want to wear the actual ribbon. With my mom's contact, they can like call her and she would meet up with them. Or um, some sponsors, people who sponsor me, they keep it on them. So if they go places, um, people could buy from them. In the Bible, I've learned that you should help others who are in more need than you. So I feel like everybody should at least put in the effort to help others who are more needy than them. Now with several sponsors, relatives and friends on board, Taya says she is hoping to expand her Ribbons for Life brand to the family islands. However, as we raise awareness on the impact of breast cancer in Bahamian families, Taya says purchasing one of her ribbons would make a small difference in the lives of survivors and those still fighting the disease. Proceeds from the Ribbons for Life sales will be donated to the Cancer Society of the Bahamas, the Sister Sister Breast Cancer Support Group, and the Children's Emergency Hostel. The inaugural first health summit hosted by Heal Incorporated was launched at the Melia Resort and Hotel on Sunday. It's a three-day seminar focusing on crucial topics in the health sector in this country. Health professionals from around the world flocked to the capital for the summit. Founder and CEO Dr. Desiree Cox spoke to us on the aims of the special summit. The vision of this summit is that in 10 years time, we will reverse the direction of health care, the focus of health care, so that prevention is the primary focus, reversing, reversing disease is the secondary focus, and only the tertiary focus is treating disease, which is the opposite of what we have. So this, the purpose of the summit is to create and catalyze a new ecosystem that drives, feeds, sustains, 
innovation in the Bahamas and most importantly to have the Bahamas as a leader of innovation as an innovative gateway in the area of healthcare. Event sponsor, chairman and founder of Unify Earth, Robert Kovitsky, was in attendance and talked about several technological advancements being made so far. Um, we've been developing blockchain and we've done over 1,000 enhancements to the BitCore platform. Um, we call it Blockchain 3.0. And um, over the last couple of weeks, there's been many articles about our company. Um, innovative people that are here at this summit um, is amazing to change the whole industry. Uh, it needs it, and the time is now. And finally this morning, it's all about reaching out and helping others in the community. And that's exactly what this group is doing in our society. Catherine Gomez has more. Free is a term we don't hear often. However, New Wine Kingdom Ministries is turning burdens into blessings with their fifth annual free food and clothing festival as they provided persons from all walks of life with new clothes, jewelry and shoes. They also served a five-star menu of lobster, conch, ham, and so much more. Bishop Rudolph and Pastor Linda Balfour says just as Jesus came to serve, they too must do the same. I realize that a lot of people are hiding in Sandalville. We know just the grassroots area. So as a local church, we, we try to uh, reach the people, okay? We realize that as we do this great work, God's been to feed the poor, clothe the, the, the naked. So that's why we're here today on this annual food festival. We want to give God thanks and praise because as you can see, we get the word block off and we already feed hundreds of people. Once a year, like Bishop Balfour said, we reach out to persons by feeding 1,000 persons and we give a full course meal just to let them know that the church cares. The smiles of recipients showed their immense gratitude. I think it make a good impact, you know, because most people don't really do what he's doing, you know, so I really appreciate what he is doing. Um, a lot of people are hurting. A lot of people um, need love, they need care. It's a great example of, of, of love because God is love. These people, they like help people, and they good people, and they, they don't just treat people, and they don't te teach them bad and stuff. They, they just make them be good and things like that. Catherine Gomez, ZNS Network News. Now, for sure, we must applaud the church for doing their part and assisting great those who are in need. Great work there, but today is National Heroes Day. Hopefully, one day you and I name will be on that list in hopefully, the next. Hopefully, hopefully. Don't say we open in the next five years or so. <laughs> you'll be on that list for National Heroes because you're doing a great job. CS and so doing are a you. Great yes. job. The entire ZNS crew is doing a great job. So we're all heroes here at the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas, and we're working on a holiday when most people are off. We don't get a day off. So what's coming up in sports? Coming up in sports, this is a big week. You know, most of the federations took a break over the weekend for the holiday, but school sports will pick right back up tomorrow. And then soccer, they have an exhibition game this morning over at the mm. Thomas A. Robinson Sports Center, so we're going to check that out. That story and more ahead in sports. Good Monday morning once again. The Youth Olympics are on in Argentina. The swimmers are in the pool first. Isaac Bastian was eighth in his heat of the 100 meter breaststroke. In a minute five, 21 did not advance, but will be back in the pool on Tuesday in the prelims of the 50 freestyle. Meantime, the other swimmer, Victoria Russell, also in the pool Tuesday. She'll be in the heats of the 50 meter butterfly. The track and field segment will get underway on Thursday. The City Men's National Soccer Team will kick it with Antigua and Barbuda in their second game of the Nations Cup come Friday at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. This morning at 10 o'clock, they expected to get in a tune-up match with local club Dynamos. Goalkeeper Julio Jamison and crew will be working on a few things. What we've been doing um, team-wise was mainly focusing on our defense. Um, as keepers, we've been focusing on um, holding the ball more and we've been working on distribution. Emmanuel Orlando Green begins his first season as head coach at the University of Kentucky. He was on the island this past weekend and Zedna Sports caught up with him and asked him about his first hiring, Golden Girl Debbie Ferguson McKenzie. 
Words can't kind of, kind of, kind of really describe what Debbie brings to the table for us, you know. I had to find the, the right mix, you know, the right, the right, the right can do it, if there's a way of putting it, between Coach Hall and myself. And um, I think Debbie, Debbie lends that, she brings that to the table for us. And when the opportunity, you know, presented itself for us to, for me to get her on my staff, you know, we jumped at the opportunity with a quickness, you know what I mean? She's, 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 she's very poised, she, she, she's very articulate, she's very sharp, she's very intelligent, and she can relate to the female athlete. You know, there are things as a male that when it comes to dealing with, with female athletes I can't really speak to but but another woman could do that and I think that that that, that it gives the young female athlete an ease that they know when they have an issue they can go to a member of the coaching staff and express that and know that it's, it's, it's going to be kept in the greatest confidence you know what I mean and or they can speak about things to another female that they feel uncomfortable speaking to a male about so her addition is priceless to our staff. Thomas Fly Football Association holding a tournament on the weekend at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Alexander Deal is the assistant commissioner and tells us just how things went. Taking months, obviously, um, and we reached out to different teams that we've played against in the States, um, as well as Freeport with their league. And um, it's taken a lot, a lot of time to put it all together and then this week was obviously chaos to make sure that today and tomorrow happen. So we have one team from the states and technically all of the players there are from all over the states. They're not all from one state. Um, and then we have two Freeport teams and then the rest are from Nassau. Um, females, we have five female teams. One is the US team and then the four Nassau teams. And for the males, we have eight male teams, two are Freeport, and the six are Nassau teams. Sounds good. And that's going to do it for your first look at sports on a Monday. Let's have a great week ahead. In our final look at weather, Leslie continues to linger out there in the uh, mid-Atlantic. It's about 990 miles to the east-northeast of Bermuda. It's now moving towards the east-southeast at about 30 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds 50 miles per hour. And Leslie continues to generate those uh, moderate to large swells, which are impacting some of our islands in the Bahamas. And then we have another tropical storm, which is formed. It's near the Yucatan Peninsula. It's carrying the name of Michael. And uh, Michael is moving toward the north at about uh, seven miles per hour and that is expected to become a hurricane either late tonight or tomorrow morning as it moves over the Gulf of Mexico and it's now threatening the uh, Florida Panhandle and by the middle of the week Wednesday there about it should move inland somewhere between Mobile, Alabama and Tallahassee. And as you can see on our satellite pictures, quite a bit of convectivity associated with uh, Michael. Some outer bands are stretching all the way across the northwest Bahamas. We got some early morning showers from those outer bands, and we will get a bit more during the course of today. The forecast uh, calls for partly cloudy, breezy, with a few pop-up showers here and there. High temperature around 87 degrees. And tonight, we're looking at partly cloudy once again with a few more showers. 77 degrees for our low temperature. And extended weather forecast, uh, mid to upper 80s, right through the seven-day cycle. Showers continuing into Tuesday, but drying out thereafter. The rest of the week is looking pretty nice, but on the weekend, Saturday, it looks as though we're going to have some more rain showing up in our forecast. LaDon? Thanks a lot, Basil. And that does it for the morning edition, this National Heroes Day. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Once again, I'm LaDawn Davis. See you right back here tomorrow morning.